instead of fixing other people's printer, uh, this time I'm fixing my own. I've actually noticed this issue once I switched over to Clipper. And uh, I mean, I already know what the issue is. I don't know if it's a power supply, but I know the voltages are correct. Uh, let's watch this. So as soon as I, I've already checked out the voltage that I'm getting, I, I've set my buck converter to 5.3 volt for the power supply. I'm getting a power warning here, but I'm also getting a, uh, it'll start flickering. And I already know it's, it's, a, it's a pulse width modulation of the bed heating, but it's sending like reverberations all throughout the whole board and everything, you know, so it's weird. Um, see it's starting to flick right there. Yeah, so that's basically why the bed's heating up right now. It's actually sending pulse width modulation. Now, what's weird is, I'm actually getting, I, I just checked my buck converter, I'm getting 5.3 volt. Uh, I mean, I hit the 5.5, let's drop down once you actually start loading it up. Um, yeah, just getting some odd issues and so I think it could be a bad power supply, even though I actually turned this up to 3.6 volt. I was thinking maybe this is bringing it down too low. But yeah, even with that, it's, it's uh, yeah, I mean, I was able to run it like this for, for months without a problem. But all of a sudden I started getting all these like uh, MCU errors, like it stopped communicating with the uh, SKR Pico that I made a video about the conversion. So just an odd issue. So I might switch out my power supply to another 30 amp I have here, but I probably have to modify my case back there to, to make it work. So if you can see this on camera, so there actually was like some ham radio connectors on my power supply. Um, I think I could call it like Dean's connector, not Dean. I'm not kidding. Like Dean's or not um, Anderson or Anderson or Dean's or something. Um, so it was actually getting kind of hot there. So I might just directly solder this on there just to see it or put a different connector on there. Um, but I do like being able to take the power supply off. So it's, I do actually have a bunch of RC car power spot or uh, connectors, high amperage. All right, so I have a straight solder connector on there now. So back in the early days of 3D printers, um, they actually had connectors and they would actually fail there. So they actually would put connectors on the actual 3D printer bed. And I had to replace a lot of those little connectors just because they were, they'd burn out. And they actually would, they, I don't, they'd almost melt to the point they would light on fire. A little crazy. So, a um, little shrink tube on there. Like I said, if this doesn't work, I don't want to waste the connector. All right, I'm just going to do that. All right, let's try that again, do an air print. Uh, printing the full already pull mount back in print. All right, so I automatically know that I'm not getting a, uh, a warning here anymore about the power. And we're going to wait for the flickering. I don't see any flickering in the light. Uh, in a couple projects, my whole thing will, will go from clean to messy. <laughs> uh, all right, so I got another power supply for the printer bot. Um, it's actually a similar form factor. There, there's a couple different styles of these three printers, printer supplies. You don't see that many of these anymore, but the original like A nets and original printers actually had this passive style. The passive style doesn't have actually like a like a uh, heat or active cooling fan on there. So this is a 20 amper. Um, you know, I'll keep the grade on it this time. But yeah, this way I'm, I'm not gonna fully put it back together. I just wanna see if it actually makes any difference. Um, you know, with the flickering, because there must be something going on there. Um, I don't know if it's the timing circuit and the power supply or the MOSFET, the heated bed MOSFET, you know? I'm not sure, man. It's, it's, it's it, it definitely feels like a, it's, whatever it is, it's evenly spaced, right? So it's something going on with the timing. Yeah, I don't see anything obvious going on with this power supply, so... Um, but, uh, alright, so I think this is a 20 amper. Alright, so I'm not going to fully put that back together. So if you're wondering what this is, it's a, my three, I designed this a while back. It's a, like a 3D printed, uh, like a power supply case. Um, so I'm going to plug it in just like that, see if it works, and then um, see if that flickering goes away. Yeah, you, if you're wondering, if you're new to my channel, this is my printer bot. And it's actually my first printer and my favorite printer. The thing is, super high quality. I just recently converted over to Clipper. I mean, every every 3D printer software has its issues. It's, I mean, there's, Clipper is not immune. But, I mean, Clipper, I think generally overall with this Clipper screen and the layout of the screen, I do actually like a lot better than like Octoprint. Um, Alright, so let's do a print. And 
come back. I'm going to get started. We'll, we'll see if that flickering go comes back. Oh, the good so news is the flickering didn't come back. So I'm at 50 degrees. It's obviously the hotbed draws a lot more power, a lot more current. I should take my multimeter and see what the output is here in case I got to make an adjustment. Oh, there it goes. Uh -oh. Flickered a couple times. I didn't start doing that now. It doesn't seem to be as consistent as it was before. All right, so I just failed again. So, yeah, obviously there's something definitely going on power related. I mean, I just changed a different power supply. Um, I took the I'm gonna, I'm gonna undo the buck converter. I'm gonna flip this over. Undo the buck converter, and uh, from well, the buck converter is, uh, converts the 12 volt to the the power of the uh, Raspberry Pi. Take that out of it, the thing you know, and uh, I do actually have an extra SKR uh, Pico board. I'm not sure. This looks pretty promising. That's the main power input of the SKR board. Now let me show you this. See those pins moving around in there? See that back and forth? That's the main power to the board. <laughs> I don't know, man. Doesn't look good. So I'm gonna restart of those, reflow of those. Yeah, that's gonna be giving it like all kinds of intermittent power. You know, lately I've had to replace a lot of uh, SKR boards for customers. Um, and actually, I've been using them since the day they came out. So um, yeah, before them, MKS was like a really big. Uh, they're big into it, but um, yeah, I'm gonna check for other just because now I'm a little worried if other cold solder joints. All right, I'm gonna put that back together and see if that uh, improves the the lights. Yeah, I mean, I, I know those cold solder joints look pretty obvious, but I'm just why would the power of the uh, the Raspberry Pi go down? You know, because it's actually wired off a buck converter. You know, that converts 12 volt into the uh, 5.2 volt. I need for the Raspberry Pi, but why would that go down when I start printing? Because that's actually wired after the board, not in, you know, not part of the board, before the board, you know. Before the. All right, there goes the flickering again, but I'm not getting power issues here. See how that? See the moss right here? It's making this power supply click. So that's actually the uh, MOSFET, the board, the heated bed, and the heater nap. I mean, it doesn't seem as bad as it was before. And this doesn't seem to be affected. You know, this, this was flashing too, the screen. I mean, I guess I can wire the LED behind it, and that seems a lot more stable too. This right here. I'm gonna reflash it back to uh, going off UART. So I actually had the uh, the Raspberry Pi going via direct UART on the board. Uh, the, in the troubleshooting process, I, I free flashed to go to a USB, thinking that might be an issue, and I you know taken the uh, Raspberry Pi to the equation. But I'm gonna flash it back because I know that's not the issue now. So it's not the power supply. I mean, the cold solder joint, you know, and the LED, I mean, so I can easily take this over here, and maybe I will do that just to see if that actually is the issue. You know, take it off the board, you know, and then uh, have it go straight on the on the power here. So I moved the LED to uh, pre-input, so coming off the main wire here. So coming off the main wire, I have the uh, buck converter, and now I have the LED. But really, what's funny is I had it wired in like that with the other SKR board. Didn't have an issue, but um, yeah, it seemed like it was definitely uh, in line with that MOSFET triggering on and off for the heated bed. So maybe there's some kind of residual something there, but um, yeah, that would be interesting if it was just the, uh, I'm going to do another test print, but if it was just a cold solder joint, you know, uh, that it was actually somehow creating like some kind of high current resistance, which was then bringing down the whole power supply, you know, um, 
I'm going to do a test print right now to see if it fails again. That's really the main thing. Is I don't care about the light flickering. It was really just, a, you know, the board crashing. So, all right. All right, so the flickering is dramatically decreased. I mean, it's still there. Um, I'm guessing it's just because of the way it's pulling power on the, on the power supply. You know, because it's not a constant, um, you know, it's not a constant, like, drain. It's, it's timing on and off because the MOSFET's clicking on and off. So it's, yeah, I'm sure it's, the whole system is probably affected by it, you know, even the, just the buck converter. But, like I said, no longer getting the power warning here. Um, and the main thing is I'm going to do a test print here and see if this thing crashes and I'll come back. Yeah, everything uh, just seems so much happier now. No longer I'm getting flickering the screen. Right, I'll come back when it's done. Alright, so this thing's been going. I've been done three prints so far. And, um... Yeah, I mean, I fixed lots and lots of 3D printers. Probably at least 200 by now. And, uh, that's the first time I've actually seen the power connector, uh, you know, the cold solder joint. So, I mean, I've messed with every kind of board you can think of. Corrality boards, SKR, MKS, you know, you know it. Um, but yeah, that's the first time we had like that kind of a weird issue, but it wasn't fully dead. So that's what made it more difficult to troubleshoot, like that it wasn't just off 100%. It was getting some weird, you know, fluctuating power, which then created issues with the MCU, the communication between the Raspberry Pi and the MCU. Um, yeah, it was odd that it was affecting the Raspberry Pi. So, all right, so if you're having a similar issue, you might want to check that. Like I said, it's, I've never seen that before, so at least I'm a 3D printer board. So, um, all right, so I right, hope this video helps somebody. Awesome.